Hello art friends, welcome back to the art room. Today we're gonna have some fun with model magic. This is a type of clay. It has kind of a foam feel to it and it will dry after a couple of days if you leave it um, maybe out on a plate or on a piece of paper, it will dry where it's kind of firm, um, but it will still bend too, which is kind of cool. And it definitely feels like foam when it's all finished. Today we're gonna use the model magic to make a mitten inspired by the book, The Mitten by Jan Brett. Um, if you haven't read the book yet, please go um, take a look at the link down below so that you can listen to the book. Um, if you notice, it's a story about Maddie. And if you notice on the side here, Miss Brett, the illustrator and the author, makes this shape of a mitten on the side of her book in her illustrations. So it gives you a little foreshadowing as to what this story might be about. Uh, so using that mitten shape today, we're going to make a mitten like Maddie's that he loses in the book. All right, so here's what you need. Grab your model magic out. Yours probably is in a little different container than mine. This is kind of a big one. But you probably have something like this. And you may only have one color, and that's fine. If you have more than one color, I'm going to show you a couple options for that too. The first thing we need to do anytime we work with clay is get it warmed up. So I'll notice I'm just squeezing it between my hands, just getting the clay warmed up. If it's too much for your hands, maybe pull a little off. You don't have to do all the clay at the same time. Just pull off a section that kind of fits comfortably in your hand and warm it up a little there. All right, we're gonna make a ball with the clay. You can do it two ways. So you can put it between your hands and roll your hands in opposite directions. Or it's kind of cool if you wanna set it down on your surface, you can roll it this way too. We start to kind of make that ball shape. One thing to note, I have um, a piece of uh, plastic down here so that my clay doesn't stick to my table. You might want to do the same. If you're on like a regular dining table or a plastic table, you'll be fine. But you don't want to be on paper or cloth or anything that the clay could stick to. So I have a little bit of a shiny piece of paper down here so that it doesn't stick to the ground too much. All right, so we have rolled our big hunk into a ball. We're going to press it down with the palm of our hand. It's starting to look kind of like a cookie, isn't it? But don't eat it. It's not really a cookie. We know that. That's so silly. <laughs> you might want to flip it over and do it a little on the other side. You can keep using your hand to flatten it out. Or if you have some kind of a little rolling pin, like this little acrylic one, you could use that as well. I'm going to use this just to roll it out a little flatter. Or you can keep using your hand. All right, if you're a part of my class and you picked up your packet, you received one of these. It's just the cutout of a mitten and a plastic knife. <laughs> we want the mitten to fit in here. So I can see that I need to roll out my clay a little more so that it's a little bigger. If you don't have a mitten, you could draw one yourself. You could have someone help you draw one. Or you could just make a circle and you could do the same thing that we're going to do, but you could just decorate it in a circle. Ah, that just fits. That's perfect. All right, I'm going to press my form onto here. Ooh, if you had cookie cutters, you could cookie cut it too. That would be kind of fun. Um, notice my clay is about the, what's kind of like a flat cookie. <laughs> um, that you want it to have a little bit of thickness to it or it'll just fall apart. Let me show you. This would be too thin. Do you see how thin that is? We need it to be a little thicker, okay? So make sure it's kind of like a flat, maybe a pancake. It's about the width of a fluffy pancake. All right, we're gonna take our knife and we have this little part that's serrated down. It's not very sharp. I'm sure if you weren't careful, you could hurt yourself, but these aren't very sharp. We're gonna press down around the edge of our template. And you can just cut some of this right off. We get to practice our cutting skills today in a different way. If you slide it back and forth, it cuts better. All right, I'm just gonna cut away the pieces I don't need. That's actually what um, someone who works in clay or marble or bronze who makes statues, I've heard that term before from them, cut away everything you don't need. So we're gonna cut away everything that's not underneath our mitten template here. 
Remember your knife can go back and forth to help you cut it off a little more easily. You don't have to cut it all at one time. Notice I'm taking little sections out at a time and just removing them. All right, so this is, is kind of a rough look at this point, but we got the idea. All right, if you want to, you can pat it back in. This is a great thing about clay and model magic. We can pat it back in so that it makes a nice, neat edge. All right, so pat it in so that it's all underneath your template. All right, ready? Let's see what it looks like. Woo, we got it. We got a mitten. I might just squeeze this in a little more so I can see the thumb. All right, take just a moment. Make sure that it's going to pull up nicely off of whatever you have it on. All right. From this point, we can just have fun with it. Um, we could add some texture. That's how something feels. Let's try it here. I just have a piece of paper towel. I'm just going to lay it. I'm going to gently press it. If I were to press really hard, I would flatten my pancake. I don't want to do that. I'm just gently pressing with my fingertips. Maybe you could even do something like this. Let them dance across it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's starting to leave the texture of the napkin or the paper towel on top of my mitten. So I've added texture to it, just like if a mitten had been knitted or crocheted, it would have a little texture to it. it might be hard to see, but you can see kind of some circles around the edge. All right, another fun thing is we could add some detail to our mitten. So take some of this extra that you have. Let's squeeze it and make it into a little ball again. I'm going to slide my mitten to the side while I'm working here. This time, I'm going to use my hand or the palm of my hand to roll it out into a long straight line. There we go. All right, we could use this to add a border around the edge if we wanted, or maybe some details like the cuff of the mitten. We could add some details there. You could also leave it plain if you want to. That's totally up to you. I think I'm going to add a little cuff to mine. So I have it rolled out. And even if it's the same color, that's okay. We're adding a little more texture to it by adding another dimension to it. So now we have this little part that sticks up and look, I can, oop, I can cut it. I almost forgot I could cut it. I was going to squeeze it off, but I can cut it off too. And there we have a mitten. And remember, you could also go around the edges if you want to with some, a little bit more. All right, if you want to be able to hang your mitten, you need a little hole in it. So I just grabbed a pencil and you might need some help with this, but I'm just going to put my pencil through the edge. See how it went through the back very gently. And now I have a little hole and when it dries, the hole will stay there and then I can hang it if I want to. All right, another cool thing with Model Magic, if you happen to have more than one color, is you can mix colors with it. Let me show you what I mean. I want you to put on your thinking cap for a minute. If I mix red and blue, what color will I get? If we had paint or we were using um, oil pastels and we took a red and a blue, let's see what color we would get. I don't know if you can start to see it now. I still see the blue and the red, but I also see some purple. I bet you said purple. You knew it was going to make purple. So if you have more than one color, you can try mixing them together. I want you to think of the color wheel. Remember, some things on the color wheel are not friends. So if you mix red and green, you're probably going to get brown. Um, but if you mix something like red and blue, you'll get purple. Blue and yellow, you'll get green. If you mix red and yellow, you would get orange. That would be kind of cool. So if you wanted to mix this, you could roll this out. And you could add a little detail of this other color on your mitten, too. With some of our leftover model magic, let's make a candy cane together. If you only have one color, that's fine. You can make a red and red candy cane. I'm going to use red and white so it shows up. Take your first piece of clay. You'll need two pieces. And I want you to warm it up. So remember, this is the same steps that we used when we made our mitten. We're going to get it warm between our hands. And then let's form a ball. You can also put it on the table here. And we're going to roll it out into that long, thin coil again. If you feel like it's not even, you can start over again if you need to or kind of even it out with your fingers. 
All right, let's do the same with our second color, or if you're using the same color, that's totally fine. I'm gonna warm it up first. And when I feel like it's good and pliable and easy to shape, I'm gonna roll it between my hands. All right, and I'm gonna roll another coil out. You see how I start in the middle and I let my hands roll out? That's another technique you can use to make a coil. All right, I have two together. We're gonna start twisting. You could hold one end down and just twist on one side, or you could pick it up and twist it both ways, whatever makes the most sense to you. You get to see, you get to decide how tight you wanna twist it. All okay, right, and then cut your ends off so they're even. Okay, we have our candy cane look, but it's kind of bumpy. So we're gonna take our hands again, and we're just gonna gently roll it. It's starting to get smooth, and it's starting to feel like it's one piece instead of two separate pieces now. All right, when you have it nice and smooth, you can shape it into your candy cane shape. And again, this just needs to sit and dry for a couple of days, and then it'll be nice and stiff, and you can actually hang it on something. All right, nice job today, guys. I hope you had fun with your model magic. If you have some more clay left, continue to um, experiment with it. Have some fun creating. Hope you guys have a wonderful break, and I'll see you next time here in the art room.